Hi, Christopher. Can you please read uh, Psalm 137 and verse 9? I have a question. All right. Psalm 137, verse 9 says, Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Can you explain that verse, please? Thank you. Yeah. Um, Psalm 139 is telling us about the judgment of Babylon, which we were talking about earlier. Um, uh, verse 1, by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. And, and then in verse 8, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. The word happy is, is what may give a, a, a wrong impression. Critics and and uh, mockers of, of the word of God who, who think that uh, they are above God, that they're God's judge. They don't understand that it's the word that judges them. They are not judges of the word, and, and yet they um, feebly attempt to do so, and they make charges and accusations. Oh, God is a cruel, heartless God. And, and, and they would point to verses like this, happy, you see that? It says, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dashes thy little ones against the stones. And they don't understand it. the word happy in the Hebrew uh, as well as in the Greek. Uh, there, there's a Hebrew word translated as happy. It's also translated as blessed. And in the Greek New Testament, it's the same thing. When you read the word happy, it's a, a word that's, that's found in Beatitudes. Blessed are the meek and so forth. Happy are the meek. You could, you could write that or, or understand it that way. And, and, and so here um, it is the blessed one. Um, blessed shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Now, who is going to reward Babylon? And, and what is Babylon's reward? Revelation 18, verse 6, declares concerning the judgment of Babylon. Well, I'll, I'll begin in uh, verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works and the cup which she has filled. Fill to her double. Reward her with the cup of wrath, the cup of indignation. In Revelation 14, uh, we, we find that refrain, Babylon is fallen in verse 8. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And then in verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So Babylon falls, judgment day, give her the cup of the wrath of God. And that is her reward that um, she uh, has earned. It, it's it's um, really God's language to indicate um, a just desert. It, it is the the uh, payment for their sin, the payment for the wrong, the injustice, the evil that Babylon has done. And again, Babylon <clears throat> representing the kingdom of Satan, which includes all unsaved inhabitants of the earth, are, are those that would spiritually make up the kingdom of Babylon, it's just another way of saying the people of the world. 
And, and so, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy or blessed shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us, because it was Babylon that first came against the house of God as Satan was loosed. He gathered his forces, Gog and Magog, and came against the camp of the saints, the corporate church that was God's representative on the earth, and, and they destroyed the church. So um, they, they served God's people in that way, and now they're receiving that reward, which is double. It, it, it's um, a, a double cup because the church is typified by the figure of one-third, and the unsaved of the world are typified by two-third, or 666. And, and so two-third is double one-third. And, and so the cup of wrath is doubled to her. And again in verse 9, Happy or blessed shall he be that taketh and dashes thy little ones against the stones. Now this is, again, not... Um, looking at uh, the uh, the uh, 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 you know some kind of perverse joy or delight or satisfaction, you know God tells us that He takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. If we go to Isaiah thirteen, Isaiah thirteen, we read in this chapter, and and guess what? Uh, Babylon is the subject. Uh, if you read in Isaiah 13, verse 1, the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Well, what is the burden of Babylon? Well, if you read um, uh, verse 6, we read of the day of Jehovah is in hand. In verse 9, behold, the day of Jehovah cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Uh, and verse 11, I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. It, no question, it is the end of the world, the final judgment of mankind that is called the burden of Babylon. So, so you see, we're not just pulling things out of, thin air, when we say Revelation 18, uh, the Babylon is fallen, is describing the fall of the world. It has much biblical support and confirmation that Babylon's a figure of the world and Babylon's fall is a figure of the world in judgment. In uh, Isaiah 13, we read in... Um, Verse 16, their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. They will not spare children. Notice the language dashing to pieces. It is describing utter destruction and devastation because it is the end and God's judgment is on all the world and all unsaved people he is no respecter of persons. There, there is no innocent ones amongst mankind. Age does not, uh, youth does not make someone innocent. And old age uh, uh, or anything in between, all have sinned according to the Bible and fallen short of the glory of God. And judgment day is the day of vengeance where God holds all accountable. Now, he's not literally going to take the, the, um, the, the young children and dash them against the stones. It's a figure, and the figure is picked up in Psalm 2 with the Lord Jesus using a rod of iron to dash the vessels 
uh, in into pieces, to break the vessels and um, the the vessels of pottery pointing to human beings that God has created. Um, uh, and and uh, the at the very end, when God destroys us and we are or destroys mankind and all who are unsaved and and they are no more, they're they're completely destroyed and removed out of existence. They are annihilated. That is what all this kind of language about being dashed to pieces means. Now, the one doing it is blessed because it's God himself. It's the Lord Jesus. He is the blessed one. And that's why the reference to happy.